as God's creation, each of us is endowed with our own special gifts. Spiritual gifts, such as wisdom, knowledge, faith, healing, and discernment, are an innate part of who we are. Other gifts and talents may arise from our natural interests or from circumstances in which we discover our previously unknown ability. Sometimes we develop these gifts with age, as we grow in our strength and understanding, and sometimes we are fully immersed in the gifts, even from an early age, that we can't recall a time when we weren't aware of them. When our gifts, whatever they may be, are used to honor and glorify God, their power can reach into hearts and souls, inspiring others to come to a closer relationship with their Lord. As followers of Christ, this is our life's work and calling. Attention, Aristra, attention, please. I don't think real conductors say that, Sydney. Oh, really? Well, Brooke, we went on the field trip to the symphony last month. Real conductors don't have to put up with people like you. Plus, they have real music stands. Hey, I'm doing the best I can. Hi, ah, look at that talking music stand. Why do you need musicians when your music stand can talk? <laughs> Danielle. Sydney, I can't find anything to use for a flute. Really, the flute is the easiest thing in the world. Here. Thank you. Orchestra, shall we begin? Well, it needs work, but I think we got a good start. Do you think we'll be ready for the Christmas program? Yes, Danielle, I think so. She thinks so, everybody. Aren't you excited? Uh... Well, I'd be more excited if we can use the instruments from the music room. And a real music stand. Ow, my back. Did you even ask Mrs. Allen about that yet, Danielle? Not yet, but I'm sure she'll say yes when she hears how good we are with this junk. Junk? Junk? I'll have you know that this genuine make-believe guitar that took me all last night to make. My mom was pretty mad when she found the back side of the cereal box was missing. Working on your orchestra again? Your sister's ridiculous, Kimmy. Hey, watch what you say about her. She's a prodigy. What does it that mean? It means having exceptional abilities for a child. Um, okay. Old McDonald seems kind of unexceptional. Maybe you need to find something else to do for the last five minutes of recess. Five minutes? Come on, everybody. Oh, sorry, Sydney. Your band sounds real good, Sydney. Orchestra. Don't worry about them, Sydney. They don't have the same kind of commitment to music that you have. I know, I don't really even want to lead the group, but Mrs. Allen says that no one can do the solo music for the program. 
What? That's ridiculous. You've been practicing your piano piece for months. I'll go talk to her after recess. No, what if she got mad? She won't let my orchestra play. Okay, if you feel that way, I guess I won't. But that sure makes me mad. Come along, everybody. Recess is over. Aww. Yes, yes, I know. You're all so excited to get back to the process of learning. All the sunshine and fresh air is just too much to bear. Hurry up now. Mrs. Allen, I was just wondering if... Yes, Kimberly? If, uh, if, I mean, is that a new dress? Because it's very pretty. It brings out the green in your eyes. This blue dress brings out the green in my brown eyes. Yes, ma'am. It's something about adjacency monochromatic in monochromatic hues. Are you using all the words from your art vocabulary lesson today, Kimberly? Yes, ma'am. I believe I must be. Hmm. Nicely done, though it doesn't make a lick of sense. Let's Where are you go. Guys going? So you can see why I want to talk to Mrs. Allen, right, Mama? I understand you love your sister very much, dear, and want to take care of her, but she's not always going to have us all right beside her. She has to learn how to stand up for herself when it's important. See? But it isn't, but it isn't fair. Why would Mrs. Allen say that? Well, if everyone did a solo, then there wouldn't be enough time, and then she'd just have to pick a few, and people would get their feelings hurt, and it would be a big mess, I suppose. Or maybe she just wanted it to be a group effort. We all know that Kid Sydney is amazingly talented, Kimmy, but this isn't a matter of fairness. How to present the Christmas program is a teacher's decision, and if she thinks that it would be a problem to have solo pieces, then the matter is settled. But it's settled. There will be many, many more programs in the future, and I'm sure Sydney will be playing in more than we can count. Want to help me finish in the kitchen? You didn't have much to say tonight. Kimmy says enough for both of us. I'm sorry. That wasn't very nice. What's the problem? Kimmy doesn't have anything she really likes to do, the way I like to play the piano. So instead, she spends all of her time talking about you and your music. I wish I could find something that'd make her happy. Since the day you came home from the hospital, Kimmy has always been your protector. She's always felt it was her job to look out for you. I think that's what makes her happy. I know it's tough now, but remember, she has your back, and that's a comfort to have in times of trouble. Do you think I'll ever have troubles, Daddy? Everyone has troubles at one time or another. But what if I do what God wants me to do? There is sadness in every life, honey. Happy, even when we're doing what's right. Happiness can't be determined by what happens around us. It has to happen inside us. And it's a choice that we make every day. And we have to trust in God, whatever happens. Oh, come on in, Doug. Thanks for having me over, Roger. If it isn't the talented Miss Sydney, you did a wonderful job on the prelude music last Sunday, but I didn't, I didn't get to say hello to you afterwards. Hello. Hello. She looks pretty deep in thought, contemplating what to have for dinner or something more important. We were just talking about how to handle troubles in life. I was explaining the happiness lies in how we choose to respond. Well, 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 that is a deep subject for uh, most of us adults to understand. So uh, what do you think, Sydney? Uh, do you understand? I guess so. Uncle Dad! It's about time you joined us for dinner. What are you talking about? Oh, happiness through adversity, trusting God in all things. Don't let us stop you. Go ahead. Before Doug got here, Sydney and I were just talking about how we can still have troubles in life, even when we're trying to follow what God wants us to do. But we can choose to find joy through those trials and trust in Him. Right. We, are, we aren't told that nothing bad will ever happen, but we are told that God will always be with us as long as we let Him, and that He will try to use a situation for good. I don't see how a bad thing can be turned into a good thing. All right, I have a story for you. Our grandmother used to tell, the, tell us this about when Grandpa became very sick and had to leave his job. Uh, because they, didn't have any, they couldn't earn any more money, they had to sell their house, most of their belongings, and move to a little shack outside of town. Right, they can only grow what they grew in their garden. So they only ate beans, radishes, turnips, and peas in their first year there. Yuck. Uncle Doug, this is a terrible story. Just wait. 
our grandma decided that she wanted to try and help out. Now, back in those days, women didn't work much outside of the house, but she went from business to business looking for work, and eventually, she got a job at the local drugstore and became very close friends with the family that owned it. The drugs, druggist's son was the local doctor there, and through their friendship, he was willing to help Grandpa even though they couldn't pay. And because Grandpa was a minister, he was able to help the druggist and his family get to know Jesus. So you see, something that seemed like a very bad situation, Grandpa's illness, selling the house, moving, turned out to be a blessing. Not just for them, but for lots of people. Right. One of the biggest lessons we can learn in life is never underestimate what God can do for us in any situation. We are charged with gifts and blessings that we are supposed to use in his service. All we need to do is trust in him, come what may, be his joyful people, and follow his plan. Just like the song says, we need to trust and obey. Sydney just laid down the piano. Play it for Uncle Doug. I'd love if you would, Sydney. all-time favorites. Mom and Dad loved hearing you play that. I didn't hear you come in. How did everything go with the Hickman's wedding cake? It was okay, I guess. I think I could have used a little more lemon in the buttercream. They seemed pleased with it, though. I'm sure they loved it. You always do a great job, Kimmy. Eh. Working from home is perfection. PJs all day if I want, only have to get dressed up for deliveries. It's not exactly a high calling, but it helps pay the bills. I wish you wouldn't underestimate yourself. I don't, but I also don't try to convince myself that what I do is important by any stretch of the imagination. It's important to your customers. You make their special days even more special. You bring them joy and sustenance and... Okay, okay, let's not do the whole Kimmy pep talk right now. I'm more interested in hearing about the Christian Symphony Orchestra. Did you hear about whether they got their funding? Yes, I have, and yes, they did. Oh my goodness, then what about your audition? Is it still on? Do you think you're ready? I wouldn't so much say I am ready as I was ready. Was? What do you mean? It didn't get canceled. All right, I didn't want to have to tell you this because I knew you'd be getting all worked up and end up driving me crazy, but... The audition was last week. Last week? Are you kidding me? Why didn't you tell me? I think I just said I didn't tell you, and this is clearly confirmation that it was a good idea. Tell me what happened! When? How? Only if you can calm down and sit quietly. Ready? Instead of going to the city with Brooke to shop for the weekend, I went to the audition. Uh uh uh. The audition on Saturday, where I met the composer, Joshua Adams. Again, no squealing, calm, quiet. I. I forgot where I was. Joshua Adams, you met 
him. Yes, and he talked with me backstage beforehand, and I was so starstruck and nervous, and then I walked out on stage, and there was this big, black, shiny box with black and white bars on the front, and I had no idea what that thing was, and I still walked over to it, and it turned out it was a piano, and I thought to myself, it would have been good if I had known how to play it, and as it turns out, I did know. And you were wonderful? I guess, or they thought so anyway. Wait, you've known since the weekend you were selected and you kept it to yourself? No, it wasn't official until I received a call a few minutes ago. I'm going to be this season's pianist. We start rehearsals in six weeks. I'm so happy for you, Sydney. And the best part is, Mr. Adams came up to me afterwards and asked about the piece I played, which was one of my original compositions, and told me I showed real promise, and that if I continued working hard, and if it fit, he would add it in the end of season showcase. My own work, imagine. Oh, I almost forgot. Guess what else? I couldn't possibly. I was the 12th caller on the radio this morning, and I won four tickets to the music hall. I'm taking Brooke and Danielle, and of course, you. Me? I wouldn't have anything nice enough to wear. I might be getting another cake order coming in. I don't know. If you're not going, I'm not going. No, you have to go. All right. In the meantime, we'll go through your closet, and if you don't have anything that does you justice, we'll just have to take a trip to the mall and buy you an outfit for this special occasion. I'm so proud of you, Sydney, and I know Mom and Dad would be so happy that everything's going your way. You've worked incredibly hard. What about you? They'd be proud of you, too. Where would I have been all these years without you by my side? Me? I haven't done anything. Your music and creativity, they're natural talents, and I can't think of anyone who could have done more of them than you have. I'm just honored I give you the person that stands beside you and supports you every day. This is so exciting. Ooh, I think I could learn to play this easily enough. Then I could keep you company. Oh. Um. <laughs> it is exciting, isn't it? I can't believe I'm going to be playing with some of these same people when our season starts. I always knew you were bound for fame, even when you were conducting our little ragtag band in third grade. Oh my goodness, don't remind me. So, I brought my instrument along. First, you didn't. <laughs> you goof, put that away before you get pulled up on stage and asked to do a solo. Fine, be that way. I can tell you're jealous of my tremendous talent. Always have been. <sighs> Still, I suppose I'll continue to support you as you go off and have your little moment in the sun and forget about all of us little people. She would never forget about us, would you? Sid. Sid, hello? Sorry, I was just looking for Kimmy. I thought she was just going to get a drink of water before she came in. Oh, there she is. She doesn't look any too pleased to be here. <laughs> What did you do? Blackmail her or something? You know how she is. Everything always has to be about me. She threw a fit when I went out and bought her a new dress to wear. I can hear it now. Oh, Sid, no. I'll just fashion a dress for myself by sewing together used napkins from the deli down the street. Will you please? A bottle of sparkling water? My, that's far too expensive. I'll just stick my head under the sink in the ladies' room. <laughs> Brooke, stop it. Dinner after the concert? Good gracious, Snow. I can just live off of the crumbs that fall out of my napkin dress. Enough! Where were you? Oh my goodness, it is so crowded in the lobby. Five dollars for a bottle of water. <laughs> no, thank you. City water's good enough for me. Mm hmm. Kimmy, would you happen to have any snacks on you? Um, no, I think I had my last peppermint on the way over. Sorry. Well, if this isn't my most favorite sister in the whole world. Your only sister, as I recall. Eh, details. Kimmy, ladies. It's been a while, hasn't it, Cam? How have you been? Life is good, and God has blessed me. Have you heard the good news about Sydney? We were just talking about how we're going to be seeing her up on stage soon. And she might get to play her own original music. What? You didn't tell us that. Uh, 
There's still... It isn't set in stone yet, so... Still, I imagine you must be on top of the world right now. It's like that movie, Mr. Somebody's Opus or something like that. Getting to create your own music and being on stage with a real orchestra playing it. Don't get too excited. There's still a lot of work left to do. Well, I better go find my seat. It was nice talking to you guys again, and congratulations on your success, Sydney. Thanks. See you Friday. I can't tell you all how glad I am he's back home. A lot of answered prayers there. I had such a crush on Cam when we were in high school, and he was in junior high. You didn't tell me that. Of course I didn't. I was a little on the shy side, if you remember, and would have never confided my deep, dark secret even to you. He seemed especially interested in hearing about your concert, Sydney. I'm sure he'll want to be there. Cameron's a nice guy, and he's always been kind towards our family. You know that, Kimmy. When you two were younger, I thought you might... Stop matchmaking! All I'm doing is pointing out the obvious. I don't know why you get so bent out of shape when someone offers a little bit of advice. I can't imagine what it's like creating the music way, the way you do. Sydney doesn't play the piano. The piano plays her. I know it seems kind of silly, but it is almost like that. I don't ever really know what's going to happen when I sit down at the keyboard. The music just starts to flow. She's always had that gift. I feel like I want this to be my masterpiece. I know that sounds hokey and pretentious, but I want it to be my offering to God for the gifts he's given me. I may joke about it, but I have mad respect for your skills. You are incredible. Thanks, but as Kimmy said, it's a gift. A gift you've been a good steward over and have worked hard so it doesn't get wasted. I think you're right. It will be a masterpiece. I'm trying a recipe for cherry chocolate cupcakes. Will you try this? Yes, gladly. And? Mmm, wonderful. Is that your honest opinion? I'm always honest with you. They're fabulous. <sighs> Good. After five days of baking, I am sick of chocolate by now. But Mrs. Winston is adamant it has to be something new and exciting. The moistest, richest cherry chocolate the world has ever seen. My mind has gone numb coming up with new ideas. You don't have to tell me twice. Creativity on a timeline is rough. Why don't you take a break? A hot bath or maybe a nap? Actually, I'm going to do just the opposite. I'm going for a run along the parkway. Have you seen the trees lately? I haven't seen anything from the kitchen all week. Poor Kimmy. Well, they're beautiful. It's like the leaves changed overnight. How about we drive out that way tomorrow so you can see? You're not going running by yourself, are you? No, Mother Hen. Danielle is coming too. She should be here any minute. Help us up then eat before you go. Uh, I'll just grab something when I get We don't want to be out after dark. Ready to go? Hi, Kimmy. Hi. Yep. See you in a bit. Have fun. Don't get hurt. Yes, Mrs. Winston, I can make the adjustment. Don't worry, it's no problem at all. Yes, I can change the cherry to banana. Don't worry about the short notice. Yes, I know business owners do need to be ready to have just at a moment's notice. Listen, Mrs. Winston, I really need to get off the phone now. I'm expecting another call. There's the door. Yes, I'll call you back. Bye. Danielle, where have you been? It's been hours. Where is Sydney? Has something happened? It's okay, I promise. Take it easy, Kimmy. Let's sit down. Sit down? Are you kidding me? I've been calling her phone for an hour. It keeps going straight to voicemail. 
she had to turn it off in the ER. She's at the hospital? It's nothing to worry about. While we were running, Sid stepped off a curb and she got her foot cut, caught in a grate. Nothing to worry about. Sydney hates going to the doctor. It doesn't make sense. She'd go to the hospital for scrapes and bruises. You're not telling me everything. They were getting ready to do x-rays when Sid insisted that I come here and tell you what happened. She knew you'd be worried by now. I have to go to her. Kimmy, really? X-rays shouldn't take long. Brooke was working tonight, so she said she would bring Sid home when she's done. How'd you get to the hospital? You left your car here. There was an ambulance. An ambulance? Instead of people stopped to make sure she was okay, I guess one of you called. They got there, she was still down, and they said, you might as well go anyway, because they were already there. Then how'd you get back here? My cousin lives near the hospital, so I called her and asked her for a ride. Where are my keys? You're in no condition to drive. Your car's here. You can take me back to the hospital, right? Kimmy, really, it makes more sense just to wait here. Sid said we would probably pass her and Brooke on the road if we went back. And she said to turn off the light when Kimmy insisted we go back anyways. Yep, my way. Surprise, how kind of you to stop by. You. Here, let me take your keys. Okay. Hi. Come sit. Let me move some of this. No, that's fine. I'll just sit over here. Would you like something to eat? Actually, I made a cake earlier. I'll bring you a piece. No, that's fine. I just had lunch and couldn't eat another thing, and that would be lovely. Not that I'm the best detective, but I surmise your casual drop-in visit was requested. Well, in the interest of self-preservation, I'll say no comment. At any other rate, it looks like you have plenty of things to keep you busy. <laughs> me and a couple dozen friends. Kimmy can't stop fussing over me. I wish you would find some other outlet for her energy. I'll check and see if they need any volunteers in the hospital. See how much I love you. I'm willing to inflict crazy Kimmy on my fellow workers just for the sake of understanding me. I don't know if she'd leave my side right now. I can't get her to stop fussing over me hand and foot. Speaking of which, how are you doing now? I'm sorry I have to get by wrong. But we're short staff in the yard lately. I've had to pull double shoes every day. to help with that. What a good idea, Brooke. Maybe you could come by after work every day and do that. I read that massage is supposed to be good for the injury, but I'm so worried I'll hurt her if I try it. Sure. I'm happy to. I'm not sure that I can stop by every day, but I'll see. No, you don't have to do that. You've already been working enough as is, and I don't want to be a burden on it. Anybody. I can learn how to do it myself. That's really not the best idea. You know, you're being awkward and you won't be able to end up hurting yourself anymore. See? Mmm. Okay, these are amazing. You know what would be a great idea? If you brought some of these by the hospital one night, they would love it. Oh, I don't know. What if Sydney needed some? 
something and it wasn't here. Then I'd fend for myself? I don't know. I'll think about it. I don't want to commit right now, especially with everything else. Okay. How are you doing with the crutches? The home nurse dropped them off last week and she got an emergency call, so I've been trying to figure them out on my own. Using the internet, no doubt. It's best if someone watches you in person to make sure you're doing it right. Let me take a spin around the room and show you how impressive I am on these sticks. <laughs> Not a good idea. Fine, bring them here. What's with the arm? Seriously, just a little twinge. Can you do this? Uh, does this hurt? Can you straighten out your arm all the way? Sid, how many times have you used the crutches like that? I don't know, a few? She's tried it a couple times every day. Or maybe, maybe a bit more often than that. What? I asked you not to use them unless I was in here with you. Using crutches improperly can cause nerve damage. That sounds serious. No, it doesn't. It sounds like something a baby aspirin could cure. Sid, I don't want to worry anyone, but it might be a good idea just to have the doctor check this out. I can call for you. Fine. Do whatever you think is best. The better you guys are both satisfied that I'm fine, the more I can get on and get back to my life. Hi, Courtney. Would Dr. Gardner's office have any time today to check up on Sydney's progress? Yes, that's right. She's having some pain and difficulty in her arm movement after learning her crutches. Yes, I'm wondering that too. Mind if we join you? It's too nice of a day to spend our break inside. I agree. Weather prediction said that it was going to be a bad weather, but this is glorious. Should we break out our shorts and flip-flops? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Brooke. You look like you've got a lot on your mind. Would you rather be left alone? Not at all. It might help just to talk. About Sydney, Dr. Gardner says that it's still not uncertain if the damage is permanent. Radial nerve dysfunction is what they're saying? Yes, it's just crushed poor Sid. She was always a lively, happy person, ready to take on the world. Just an indomitable spirit. But she seems lost for the first time in her life. I'm so sorry, Brooke. It must be so hard for you to see that. It is. But like the doctor says, there's still hope for her recovery. I wish I could do something to help. You know, I have been praying for you both. That means a lot. I've never had to watch someone I care about face an obstacle like this before. I've seen it happen lots of times. An injury affects a person's livelihood. She feels like she's not the same person she once was. We, we feel like we can fix everything, but all we can do is help them with their physical rehab. It's up to them to deal with their emotional and psychological changes in their life. If it's hard for me to watch, I can't fathom how difficult it is for her to go through this. But, like you said, there's always a chance. Stay positive. That's exactly what I would expect to hear from Sid. Or would have expected before she gave up. You know, it seems to me, Brooke, that someone with a spirit like Sydney's just can't be kept down. It may take her a while, but I'm sure she'll get back into the thing swing of things. I hope so. If only she had some glimmer of hope. She's a pianist, right? 
A very talented one. I think I remember hearing her play at the Junior Symphony a few years ago. I hope her career isn't over. Surely it isn't. She got started on physical therapy early, and she has you. I've been trying to be there for her, but with all the extra shifts we've been working... Don't overextend yourself. I can come over a few nights a week and help out. Do you think that Sydney would be receptive to someone other than you? You're so nice to offer, but I'm not sure how she would respond to that. Thank you. Somewhere I heard that there's music written specifically for right hand or left hand. Commission for a pianist who lost a hand in the war, I think. I saw a special on public television about that. He didn't want to give up the piano, so they had music written specifically for him. I'm not sure that'd be something Sid's interested in. She loves to play, but I don't really know how to explain it. When she plays written music, she adds to it and makes it her own. The creation of music, the composition, that's where her heart is. And that's not something that she can do without the use of a hand? Not the way she plays. It's just different. Kind of hard to explain. What about... What? Well, not everyone is receptive to this, but... Therapy, like, like counseling. I've heard that the Bingham Center has done some remarkable work in that area. Or if you don't want to do that, or if she doesn't want to do that, you could just find a really good listener. It's a possibility. Of course. How did I not think of it before? It's perfect. She can't say no. Well, are you going to share? I'm my brother. He's had plenty of experience counseling at church, and I bet he'd be glad to help. Does he know Sydney? Well, he's four years older, older so they never really hung out much. But Sid's parents were youth leaders at the time, so he went over to their house. They knew each other just not very well. Seems like the perfect fit if he's willing. I think you're right. <laughs> he's doing some consulting work, so his schedule is flexible. And he's also renovating his house, but I bet he welcome a break from that. <laughs> Well, what are you waiting for? Call them right now. We'll leave you to it. Good luck. Thank you both. <laughs> we'll keep our fingers crossed. And our hands folded. Cameron? Hi. I didn't catch you at a bad time, did I? Hey, I have a favor to ask of you. Are you free for lunch tomorrow? Oh, hi, how's the renovation going? Good. There were some ideas I wanted to run by you, but could we do that later? Yeah. Um, I'm anxious to hear, but let's go ahead and order before the lunch crowd gets in. <laughs> Their tacos here to die for, but really everything is quite good. You can't make a wrong choice. Hmm. Well, I am starving, so let's see. Welcome to Tanner's Taco Hut. I'm Lana, your taco tour guide. Would you like to try this super Tanner taco tower today? I'm not that hungry I can eat a whole tower, but do you want to split that, Brooke? Sure. I'll get the table. <laughs> Would you like the jalapeno business sauce with that? Yes, and uh, two root beers. Great, that'll be six fifty. That's a... Uh... Pretty cheap for a tremendous tower of tasty tacos, huh? Yeah, well, here you go. <clears throat> Thank you for dining with us today. It's been a pleasure to serve you. We'll bring your food when it's done to your table. Yeah, thanks. <sighs> here you go. Thanks. Now. What was this favor you were asking me about? It's about my friend Sydney. You remember what a talented composer and pianist she is? Oh yeah, she played for my graduation. I think she played a piece that she had um, made herself actually. Quite good at it too. Well, 
Unfortunately, she had a fall while running a couple of months ago. And while she was learning to use her crutches, it caused what might be permanent nerve damage in her arm. Oh, poor Sydney. She was always optimistic, ready to take on the world, but she's really struggling with this. Hmm. You said the damage might be permanent, but when did they find out? It'll just take time. Maybe one day it will heal, but there's no way to tell until and unless she starts to feel sensation in her arm again. Hmm. You know I'm not musically talented myself, but what were you planning on having me do to help her? You're a great listener, and I'm not looking for an answer for her problems. I just want a way for her to come to terms with it all. Okay. Well, let me check my schedule to see. Well, it seems like I'm open next week. Will that work for her? There's a get-together at Danielle's tomorrow afternoon. I'll try and combine forces and see if we can get Sydney on board with the idea. Wait a minute. You haven't even talked to her about this yet, have you? Well, of course not. I was 99% sure you'd say yes, but if you didn't and she was already on board with the idea, we'd have an even bigger problem than we have right now. That's true. Well, text me and let me know whenever she's available. I can do that. Thanks. Look at this. Quality safe family time? Hey, Kim, you remember Danielle, right? Oh, yeah. Weren't you a server at our senior prom? Oh, Enchantment by the Seaside was the theme. And I remember we had the gym all decorated like a beach, <laughs> and the tables were all set up next to the pool, and oh, and there was this one girl who tried to carry a tray of spaghetti over her head like a pro. And then she dropped it and got it all over her dress. How nice of you to remember. And, and then she, um... Fell into the pool, but hey, at least the spaghetti stains came out. Yeah. Nice to see you again. You too. See you later. <laughs> oh my gosh. I didn't know it was her until it was too late. How embarrassing. Maybe we should ask her to join us. <laughs> yes, I'm sure she'll jump all over that. I'm so sorry. I just, I didn't know your friends as well as I should have. <laughs> There is a four-year age gap. You were a high school man while my friends and I were still lip-syncing to Disney stars at our sleepovers. Still, I should have made an effort to get to know them. Oh, sure. What high school senior doesn't want a flock of tweens following him around the halls? Maybe I should pay for a meal. Hey, Danielle! Oh. I hope she's not mad. Danielle doesn't get upset with people. I... I wonder if she forgot her order, though. I couldn't catch your friend, and she forgot her seat. I saw that she was visiting with you, too. Would you mind giving it to her? No, that's fine. Thanks. That was weird. <laughs> Yet, you, you get a receipt, but you don't buy anything. Maybe she carries a tab, or maybe she's got a frequent taco taster card. Brooke. What? Oh, the receipt's for $200. How weird is that? Huh, you could ask her about it. <laughs> Tempting, but no. If she wants to tell me about it, she will. It's her business, not mine. All right. Well, tell me how I can help Sydney. <sighs> oh. Do you want help getting up these steps? We need to be on both sides. Careful there, don't rush her. Nobody's rushing anybody, just encouraging. How I let you talk me into this, I don't know. However it happened, I'm just glad you agreed to come. Well, I feel like a knucklehead. Whatever you feel like, you look beautiful. Maybe we pop in, spend a few quiet moments on the sidelines, and then a quick exit, okay? 
Sydney, you did come. Sydney's here. Hi, Sydney. Sydney. So much for quiet moments on the sidelines. How did you manage it? When I was talking to her this morning, she was coming up with every excuse under the sun. My boot is too clumsy. I didn't get much sleep last night. I might be coming down with a cold. Absolutely shocked you did it. My mind control powers are strong with this one. Oh yeah? I can see you doubt. Okay, so there may have been some discussion about how it would be good for me to get out and socialize since I've been so busy at work and then going over to her house in the evenings. So in other words, you booked her a trip on the guilt train. <laughs> First class accommodations though. Girls, I don't know if I can do this. I'm so tired and my arm has been throbbing and... Oh, sure. I guess I didn't think about that. I was just so focused on getting away and enjoying everyone's company. I should have been focused more about you than on myself. Let's go ahead and get you back home. I... I guess I can stay for a little while. You've been so great about being there for me. I wouldn't want to keep you from having an afternoon off. Well, only if you're sure. All aboard. <laughs> Your ankle seems to be on the mend. You look like you're getting around pretty well. Aren't air casts just the worst? I had to wear one for a few weeks, and it, I've never felt more awkward or clumsy in my life. But you don't look that way. How soon do you think you'll be able to start playing the piano again? You okay? I just hate this. Sydney isn't strong enough to be out like this. She needs to go home and rest. This party was a terrible idea. I'm sorry you feel that way. I don't mean to insult you. It's just... I know what's best for Sydney, and seeing all her friends just going on with their lives, just as normal, it hurts her. Not that she doesn't want good things for them, it just emphasizes all that she's lost. Maybe forever, and it makes it harder to deal with. Don't you think that maybe sitting home all by herself is creating, I don't know, maybe too much focusing on herself and her problems? That decision is really up to Sydney and me. That's what I think. Oh, Kimmy, sometimes it can be hard to be objective when you're trapped in the middle. Trapped? I have never thought of my relationship with my sister as being trapped. Oh golly, that's not what I'd say. Uh, is, is this a private conversation or may I interrupt? Please. Kimmy, I've been meaning to tell you how much I love the pastries that you donated for the donor's luncheon last month. It was absolutely amazing and everyone raved about them. And I think they're one of the reasons why we broke last year's donation record. Oh, it's nothing. No, I disagree. In fact, if it's okay with you, I can see several more jobs coming your way. That's nice. We could use the extra income right now. Okay, great. I'll get the word out. Oh, Danielle, I think we're running low on cider. Is there more in the kitchen? Yes, there is. Excuse me, I have to go take care of that. Do you need any help? Come join the others. Have you had a chance to say hello to Gina yet? You guys were in the same graduating class, right? And you were in the carnival that year. <laughs> Don't think I'm not on to you by now. What's that supposed to mean? Please, give me some credit. You're the one who supposedly needed to get out, but you've been standing over there watching me the entire time. What do you think I am? Stagnating at home? The thought may have crossed my mind. Look, I really appreciate everything you do for me and spending what little free time you have to bring me to such lovely social functions, but I'm okay. It's just going to take some time. Some time. I'm sure I'll be on the mend soon. Soon. Okay, friend, here's my proposal. I agree not to drag you out to any more get-togethers, movies, parties, etc., etc. 
If you'll talk to Cameron. Talk to Cameron? Like a counseling session? Nothing on a professional basis, just talking about what you're thinking and what you're feeling. I'm thinking I feel like this is a setup. That's my offer. Take it or leave it. Your bedside manner stinks. You know that, right? I don't know what you mean. I'm as charming as they come. Rescuer, all hail, enter, please. It's good to see you, Sydney. Is it? May I sit down? Oh, please, where are my manners? May I get you something to drink? No, thank you. How long since you've been home, Cam? Three years? Five years next month. <laughs> Time really flies if you're busy, huh? It sure does. I, I thought I heard the piano as I came up the walk. The piano? Oh, no. Nobody plays that thing anymore. It's just a nice conversation piece and dust collector. So you weren't playing the piano at all. So you aren't playing the piano at all these days? My mother always said you used to sing and play like a bird. The bird has been caged. Bad wing, you see. It's nice that you got to stay in your old folks' house. It's always nice when a neighborhood can maintain that kind of stability. Mm-hmm. I, I see you made a few updates, though. But I can still remember when your family had us over for uh, youth groups and we'd have movie nights and campouts. The good old days. Any day can be a good old day. Pardon? It's just what's inside of us, whether we ch consciously make that choice to choose happiness. Sydney, are you okay? What? Oh, yes. I was just remembering. Brooke did ask if you wanted me to come, correct? Did. And you said yes. Uh-huh. I am getting a very distinct feeling that this either isn't a good time or you've changed your mind. No, it's just I'm not the best hostess lately. Totally understandable after all you've been through. You must feel... Do you want to talk about how you feel? I feel lost, untethered. Like I'm floating without anything to hold on to. I feel angry and confused. Like everything I've worked hard for has been taken away from me. To do what? Psychoanalyze me? To talk, to share, to let you know you aren't alone. I know you want to help, but you just can't understand. You've lived a charmed life and everything has turned out exactly how you planned. And the same goes for my friends. You just can't understand. I think you may be wrong about them. I know you are about me. Everyone has struggles in life, some more obvious than others. But just because you can't see them doesn't mean they haven't gone through their fair share. You can't escape, all pa you can't escape pain in life, Sydney. It's always going to happen. I don't know. Because I don't know anything. This is who I am, or was. What happens to me now? Now? That's mainly up to you. The thing you said before, about looking for one good thing every day, reminds me of a conversation I had with my father. Right here. It must have been over 15 years ago. 
Your father was my Sunday school teacher. I had a lot of respect for him. He was never afraid to tell it like it was. I remember I asked him if I was very good, if I could keep from having troubles in my life. And he said, no, that I would have troubles anyway. But it was up to me how to respond to them and to trust in God that everything would turn out as it was supposed to. I recall thinking the same thing when I was your age. Every single thing I did, I tried to do perfectly. Oh, I thought maybe just this once my father was wrong. I did all of my chores before I was asked to. I cleaned my room every day, and I practiced my piano for hours and hours every week. Mr. Jackson was your music teacher, wasn't he? He always held you as the standard for all the other students. That must have been awful. I think it was around when I was seven or eight when I realized I wasn't even playing what was on the music sheets. The tune was the same, but the way I played it was my own. Is that when you started writing music? Yes. Mr. Jackson told me to imagine in my head, play it, then write it down. He was such a no-nonsense person, but it didn't work that way for me. I had to just let my fingers glide across the keys and that's how it came out. It came from my heart instead of my head. Corny? Not at all. I think that's an incredible gift. Exactly. And it was such a worshipful experience for me. Without it, I feel like I'm nothing. Sydney, I know you feel hopeless, but just because God takes away one gift doesn't mean he's not going to leave you with any left. Now, I could serenade you, but that hardly seems fair to punish you like that. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. I don't know how to trust in that promise. Look for the good in everything, every day. Especially when it's hard to. Read your scriptures. They're filled with hope. Thanks, Cam. Do you think we could talk more? Of course. Sorry to keep you waiting, Miss Fisher. I hope you haven't been here very long. Only about half an hour. I don't mind, Mrs. Wood. My shift is set for another two minutes. Such a hectic time for us. Applications rolling in by the dozens every day. I'm just so glad to have the opportunity to... If we had the funds to properly staff this hospital, what a difference it would make. As it is, I could call up half these applicants and they'd turn up their noses as to what we call a paycheck. We lose so many good ones. Yes, but fortunately there are a lot of good ones right here waiting for a chance. Oh yes, the ones right here. Well. I suppose I should get right to it, since you have, what, nine minutes left? <laughs> yes, I suppose I can shovel paperwork and listen at the same time. <laughs> Why does that always amaze the young ones? To get right to the point, Miss Fisher, I'm afraid your application has been denied. It, it's nothing personal, I assure you. I see. Again? Again? Oh yes, you have applied before. Actually, four times before, but I understand you can lose count. Thank you very much for your time, Mrs. Boyd. Sit down, Miss Fisher. I don't want to be late for my... Sit down, my dear. I'll call your shift supervisor and let them know that you've been in a meeting with me. You're disappointed, and quite frankly, that fills me with hope. Excuse me? You're disappointed because you're dedicated to your work. You want to learn more and you've been denied that opportunity, for now. That it matters so much to you, that you're so passionate about what you do, it's, it makes me hopeful. I see. Don't you give up, young woman. You just keep on jumping at every chance that comes your way. Yes, ma'am. Fisher? Ma'am? Ever thought about the hospice care unit? Well, no. I've only ever tried to get into pediatrics. 
My nursing school advisor said I'd be a natural. <laughs> a natural. Sometimes we do things that we're naturally good at, and that's completely fine, but when we decide to stretch a bit out of our comfort zone, we see an entire different path open up to us. Think about it. There's an opening coming up next month, and an application on the table to your right. Well? I didn't get it. Aw, oh, nuts. I'm so sorry, Brooke. I know it meant a lot to you. Yes, it did. But you're smiling, and that's weird. It is, isn't it? Mrs. Boyd suggested that I look into the hospice care unit. I've never thought about it before. I've never really thought about anything other than pediatrics. I think he'd be a perfect fit. I guess we'll see. There's an opening coming up next month, and she asked me to grab an application. How exciting, but we better get back upstairs. We spent our whole lunch break waiting for you to come out of her office. Lunch soon, okay? Okay. Bye. Bye. See ya. Danielle, what are you doing here? The Shaws just had another baby. I'm bringing by the official gift basket from the choir. Are you coming or going? We could grab lunch at the Taco Hut. I just got here. My ship starts in right now. Sorry. See you later. Oh, that reminds me. I am forgetting to give you this receipt. Oh, thank you. I thought it was lost. Um, okay. Well, see you later. Bye. Are you busy? No, come in. I found that receipt we were looking for. Thanks for bringing it by so promptly. Where did it turn up? A friend of mine had it. A friend? You're usually so particular about no one knowing of your contributions. Funny thing, I saw her and her brother when I was buying the gift cards. We talked for a little bit. I guess the cashier must have given her the receipt when I left it behind. But anyway, now you have it, so I'll get going. Uh, no, come sit down. Me and my family are going river rafting and camping this weekend. The kids are really looking forward to it. Danielle, your mother was such an inspiration to me. She was my biggest supporter, no matter how much I wanted to give up. She never let me. I feel like I owe a lot to her, to her memory. She was a wonderful lady. In our conversations, she sometimes tell of how she looked for, forward <laughs> to watching you and your children, and how, well, what I'm trying to say rather awkwardly, is that I don't think you realize the impact you are giving to so many lives. I'm not doing much, just sharing some what I have. I'm glad to do that. It may seem small to you, but not to all those children. You're giving them a glimpse into a different future, a better life. What better gift than the gift of hope? How could anyone spend that much money alone anyways? But thank you. I think it's what my mother would have wanted me to do. I hope that I would have made her proud. You always did, and you still do, Danielle. Hi, Cam. Hey, what's up? Nothing much, just reading. Any good book I might be familiar with? If you must know, yes. Good for you. I've been following your plan, looking for one good thing every day, reading, praying, think about, thinking about the conversations I had with my father around the dinner table. It's making a difference. That's great. And now you have an opportunity to add a fifth thing. Hold on. How many things do you think I can handle? At least one more for sure. Are you ready to hear? Does it matter? No, not really. How do you feel about becoming the next generation's Mr. Jackson? Hold on, 
I think we're losing connection. Did you just say Mr. Jackson? Okay, not a full-fledged 15 pupils a week music teacher, but there's this kid. His family can't afford lessons. Oh, Cam, I don't know. I know you'd love him, and you can just try it for a few weeks. If it doesn't work out, that's fine, but you could at least see how it goes. No obligation. Uh, I don't... Maybe. Try maybe. Maybe. I'll think about it. How about one lesson? A trial? I guess I could just meet him. Perfect. Later this week? Sure. Later this week. Okay. I'll talk to you soon. How do I keep getting set up by this family? I hope I haven't made a big mistake. Sydney Payton, meet Jordan. Nice to meet you, Mrs. Payton. Not Mrs. Oops. <laughs> oh. Thank you for letting me have lessons, Mrs. Just call me Sydney. Okay. Wow, what an awful, really nice house you have. Is that your piano? Yes, it is. Later this week? Arguably, it is later than when I called you. You did this so I could change my mind. Would you like to play? Sure. How long ago did you start taking lessons? I never had lessons. My mom cleans a house, and they have a little piano, and sometimes they let me play it. Then how did you learn how to play that song? I listen to the different keys, so I remember it for later. So when I play a song, I know which sound comes from where. You know what I mean? I know exactly what you mean. Well, if you need me, I'll be over here basking in my success. Fine. Do you think you could find the tune to Old MacDonald? I haven't conducted anyone in that song since the third grade. What's conducted? It means leading someone who's playing music. Here, hop up. Let me take a look. I used to keep some of my beginner books in here. Ah, here it is. Now, let me show you what these lines and dots mean. What's going on? Who's this? Oh, hey, Kimmy. Uh, this is Jordan. Uh, Sydney's going to think about, about giving him lessons. Sydney isn't a piano teacher, Cam. She's a musician, a composer. And she can still be all those things while helping a guy out. We don't want to run the risk of aggravating the injury, Cam. How would she do that? She's just teaching him how to play, not actually playing. <sighs> Come on, Kimmy. Sydney isn't here. She went to buy a portable keyboard for somebody. I didn't come to talk to Sydney. I came to talk to you. Oh? Kim, I don't know what I did to upset you. We've been friends for a long time, and I want to make things right. You don't know? Really? I assume it has to do with something about Sid wanting to help Jordan, but I don't know why that would make you upset. It would give her time to get her mind off herself that shows how little you really know her. Sydney has never thought of herself. I don't mean selfishly. I mean the way we all tend to lose our way when 
We get caught up on our own things. She has known her way since she was three years old. Did you realize she started picking out notes on the piano that early? She did. By the time she was six, we could all see she was really going to be something special. And she is. Yes, she's more than a musician. She's a composer. She creates beautiful, striking pieces of music. She was almost finished with her first concerto. Her masterpiece, she called it. Her offering to the God for the gifts he's given her. And then, an accident. A stupid little misstep on the road, and it's all over. You don't know that. Yes, I do. I know because she's officially given. She's decided, thanks to you, that she can chart out some new course in life and give up on all her hard work and dreams. Give up on a miracle. Miracles come in different forms, sometimes disguised as new opportunities. Where'd you get that? A fortune cookie? I'm serious, Kim. So am I. Brooke said that she had some improvement the last time she had a visit. If she's so willing to start over a new career, she won't have the same drive to have her music published. Even if she does regain ability and can continue to compose, she's lost the ability to be in this year's symphony, and she might not even care by next year. But the symphony, it's just one opportunity. It's not just that. It's everything, Cam. Everything she's worked for. And she acts like everything's going to be okay. Well, isn't that good? To have a positive outlook, no matter what? You can't begin to understand what makes Sydney who she is. With the age difference, no. I don't know Sydney as well as I'd like to. But I always remember you talked about her a lot. Mostly about her music, but also about her character, her dedication, happiness, focus, and her faith. Her faith hasn't made a difference, though. We've prayed for her arm to be healed, and it hasn't been. Maybe healing will come later. Maybe not, but for now, if Sid is led from a different place than she thought. No! I can't accept that all those years of work were in vain. I know it's hard to accept when life throws us a curve. She walks around with that eternal optimist smile saying we need to look for the good in everything. And here I am trying to be the voice of reason in a room full of Pollyannas. Leaving all the burden of worrying on you. Yes! I know it's hard to accept. But... Her only desire in life has been to create music that would inspire people and be honoring to God. And that may still happen, but for now, she has the chance to help a new student develop his career. And... But isn't making the life isn't making the difference in the life of a child one of the greatest gifts we can give? I suppose. Maybe I should just give up. I'm so tired, Cam. I'm worn out. You've been doing this for a long time, haven't you? Over three months now. More like 25 years. What? I remember talking to your father a long time ago, and he said that since the day she was born, you became Sydney's protector. You shouldered all of her burdens, or at least tried to. But she's a grown woman, and it's time to let her go. Yes, she'll fall, but it doesn't mean that she can't get back up, and she will get back up, and you'll be there to love and support her. And you, it's time for you to get on with your own life. What would I do with myself? Well, you do love to bake. That seems so small compared to everyone else. You're all involved in these noble causes, and I bake cookies. Kim, I have an idea. Oh, why do I feel like I'm going to regret this? Hello! Hi, Miss Peyton. I'm Lisa Nichols from the Compassionate Hearts Children's Center. Nick, Miss Nichols, please come in. It is so nice of you to come by. I'm so sorry I couldn't come by your office today. That's all right. I was in the area anyways. And call me Lisa. I'm Kimberly. Well, Kibby. No, Kimberly. My best friend growing up lived just down the street from you. The Mortons, did you know them? Yes, they were good friends with my parents growing up. Back in the day, we used to close off the s streets in the summer and have block parties. Oh, how fun. I grew up in an apartment in the city, so I missed out on the traditional suburban side of life. Let's get to it, shall we? 
As you know, Cam Fisher recommended you for a position with us. He says you're quite the talented baker, and we need someone dependable on our kitchen staff. That sounds wonderful. Okay, I have a few questions and some paperwork here. Just a formality. Are you available full-time, five days a week? Yes. There are times when weekends will be required. Is that acceptable? Of course. Hours? Most of your work will be during the day, but for special events you'll be needed at night. Any time is fine. How about transportation? You mentioned that's why you couldn't stop by the office today? Oh yeah, my car's in the shop for some minor repairs. It's nothing new, but it's dependable. What's your work experience? In high school, I worked at Pat's Pastry Place, and then after college, I got a job working here at my own house selling baked goods. Will that be a conflict with your full-time job? No, I'm a good multitasker. Okay, that sounds great. The job also involves a lot of interacting with children. Interacting? How? Well, we're a small facility staff-wise, so you'll be called upon to do a number of things. Such as? Well, the custodian, he goes on, takes children on field trips, and the, the teachers, they go grocery shopping, and me being the manager, I'm everywhere from supervising children to washing dishes to bandaging skin knees. And the kitchen staff? Well, you'll be called upon to do a number of things. Does that concern you? It's been a while since I worked with kids, but I was kind of a second mom to my little sister, so I think I could handle it. If you're willing, I think you'd be great. How about Saturday? Saturday, really? We have a winter reception, and I can't think of a better way to get you broken in. Okay. Okay. Buddy, easy. I can do that with my elbows and do better. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Really, though? Are you nervous? A little. Miss Sydney said it's just like practicing in a living room. Are you ready, Jordan? I think so. You did a wonderful job on your piece, Scott. Thank you. The lessons with you every Saturday have really helped. I'm glad. How would you feel about adding another day? I think my Tuesday afternoons are free for a while. That'd be great. I really want to learn how to play some of the music from Star Wars. I think we could try that. Cool. Want to go warm up? OK. Let's do this. I haven't had the chance to ask. How's the new job going? I guess it's going pretty well. Miss Kimmy, Miss Kimmy, we make butterscotch cupcakes again next week. Butterscotch, butterscotch. I never had them before. They sound so good. Please, Miss Kimmy, then you can post us at recess later. And show us how to make the daisy chain. Anna said you knew how. Children, please, let me catch my breath. I'll think about making the cupcakes. If you're all very good and mind your manners, you might get a special treat. But what about the daisy chain? I guess I can stay a little bit late on Monday and show you. Yay! Settle down! This is a very nice recital. There's no cause for such commotion. Quiet now. Go find your seats and act like young ladies. So you said it's going pretty well. Fine. Yes, it's wonderful. I love baking goodies for the children. They're so appreciative of everything I do for them. But mostly it's the interaction with them. It just warms my heart. I can fuss and reprimand and love them to pieces. A perfect fit. I'm happy for you, Kimmy. Thank you, Cam, for everything. Ladies and gentlemen, please find your seats as we continue to, with the rest of this evening's recital. We have a special surprise presentation from Sydney Payton. 
Most of you know my young friend Jordan. He's been working on a piece that he wrote himself, an adaptation of an old favorite, and he asked if I would accompany him, and it's my great pleasure to do so. As followers of Christ, we have a unique opportunity before us. We are His representatives in this time and place, the embodiment of His gospel. As we go through each day with grace and kindness, as we earnestly seek to submit to his will, yielding our own. As we learn to trust in his plan and look to the future in faith. As we work through the trials that beset us, in anxious anticipation of the treasures God has in store for us. As we begin to fully submit to God's direction, we will realize the potential He has placed within us. Through acceptance and willingness to follow Him in the path He sets before us, and by using our gifts and blessings to bring honor and glory to Him, then, and only then, can we become the masterpiece He created us to be.